Hello Aquarius, welcome to the channel, this is Asnoitia here. For those of you who are returning, thank you so much for liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. And for those of you who are new, welcome. So this is a general love reading, and I'll be looking into the feelings and emotions of the person that you are connecting with on a romantic level. What it is that they're feeling and thinking towards you currently. The deck that I'm using is the Goddess Oracle deck by Amy Sophia Marashinsky. So some of you may have been in a relationship in the past. This could also be a current relationship. For others of you, this could be a situationship. And for a small portion of you, this could be someone who you've met where you have a whole lot of energy, but no one's really speaking up. For those of you who are new, my method of reading is just slightly different. I do have the ability of channeling through my higher intuitive self to get the answers that I need. I do not channel through any spirit guides. I never have. At the end of this reading, I do channel Archangels Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, and Uriel to provide you with some advice based on what comes up today. <laughs> Good Lord. My, my. <sighs> Aquarius, what's going on? One, two, three, four cards that are very dark. <clears throat> Slightly more than half of what we have here. These feelings and emotions could be, I'm getting the word transitory, but what I wanted to say was um, they could be in the reverse. So Aquarius, you also could be experiencing this or maybe even going through this. This is what the cross watcher, this is your person of interest, uh, Aquarius, what they're feeling, what they're thinking, what they're going through. Here we have laughter followed by play. Then we have feelings and emotions, awakening, illness, wellness, betrayal, order, healing. Under the bottom of the deck, the overall arching theme, we have shape-shifting. I'm going to express to you what it is that your person of interest is feeling towards you currently. My dear Aquarius, in you I have found a home, someone I could call my own. You are my best friend my confidant. With you, I get the sense of vibrance, of youthfulness. I feel as if you know me. You know me so well. You know what makes my heart happy. You know what makes me tick. There's certain things about you that are very unique and certain things that I'm drawn to. Here, so much has changed, so much has happened in this connection that I feel it's difficult for me to move on and to be with you the way that I would like to. You have this way of making me laugh. You are that ray of sunshine on the cloudiest of days. You are my best friend. And I also feel in this connection, there's this part of me that just wants to play, that wants to be vibrant again, youthful again. I feel happy to be alive. And I feel that it's this love that makes life worth living. Again, I feel that you are my best friend and it's hard for me to keep my emotions at bay. You're more than a friend. You make me feel young again and want me to explore life to the fullest. There's mischief in your eyes and I want to explore. This vibrance, this resilience, it is inspiring. And a part of me now has these feelings and emotions that are quite strong. 
these feelings and emotions that I feel, that I go through, when you are happy, I'm so happy. And when you are not, when you are sad, my world does fall apart. I don't know what to do. I want to be that person that can make you happy. I want to be that person that can give you everything that you want, all that you need. I want to be that individual that's there for you in your time of need. I also feel that in this connection, certain things I have missed. I have not seen things from your perspective. I have not seen things from your point of view. And now finally the time has come that I do. I see things from your perspective now and I've put myself into your shoes and I understand what you did and why you did it. I also understand how you feel deep down on the inside. Certain things perhaps that you just never really shared. In this connection, you have that power of making me feel ill and also making me well. That is a powerful force. To you, even though it seems that I have a lot of affection, to you it may seem as if I'm ignoring you. Why am I ignoring you? Why did all of this happen and why is all of this happening? This feeling that I have of wanting to be this individual who can move forward, who can give you what it is that you want, that feeling is weighed down and pulled down, yanked down by certain things, certain situations, circumstances that are beyond my control. There's a part of me that really wants to move on. There's a part of me that wants to let go. But even though I want to go above the surface of this water and see this shining face, and that is you, the sun, I find it difficult to do that. Instead, there are things that weigh me down, below the surface of this water. And I feel restricted. I feel constraints. I feel obstacles, burdens. Memories that haunt me, traumatic experiences. There are many things that are preventing me from being with you the way that you would like to, Aquarius. And yet to you, this seems as if it's betrayal. The one and only betrayal. You thought you knew me, and it turns out you never really knew me at all. I also feel that in this connection, the fact that you and I, we have not really seen things clearly. We don't see things eye to eye. There is this sense of betrayal. You thought you knew me. It turns out you never really knew me at all. And the entire time, to you now it seems as if I was taking advantage of you. There were lies. There was a sense of betrayal. There was a storyline that never really existed. But now certain things have changed. Even though I have felt that I have betrayed you, and not deliberately, it just kind of happened. Now there is this lack of trust and a lack of faith in this connection. Because of that, there is a lack of clarity and understanding when we're moving forward. And I do not know how to make a choice, how to make a decision. Because I am surrounded by clouds, forwards, backwards, left and right. So much fog, I cannot see. This fog that exists, one day when it dissipates, one day when it fades, I will be able to see the right path, the correct path. 
and I will move forward. Because at that point, I won't be afraid of making a mistake. Because before I was, I was quite afraid. All of this has made me think twice about what I have done, who I have become in this connection. And I am healing. Healing from the sorrow, healing from the pain that I've caused you. Healing from the hurt that I've caused you. Although, no matter in this connection, no matter where I go, no matter what I do, no matter who I'm with, something happens and I'll always end up thinking about you. You are the sweetest distraction. I find it difficult not to think about you. For now, there's a huge part of me that has a lot of affection for you. A lot of feelings and emotions. And these feelings and emotions run deep since I feel that you are my best friend. For now, even though I am doing something else, even though I'm with somebody else, I still long for you and I yearn for you. I find that difficult to follow. All right. Aquarius. Your person of interest has realized certain things. They've come to this awakening moment, and so now they're healing, which is great, because they see things from your perspective now. They're seeing things a bit more clearly. Here, there is a lack of choice. There is a lack of decision making. And that is because of the order card. This person's quite confused ever since there has been this betrayal in this connection. For a small portion of you, this could be a third party situation. This is my third party card where your person of interest may be on the path to another location with someone else on the path with somebody else on their journey but they're turned towards you and you're headed off here in a different direction so even if their time energy and effort is being spent elsewhere they're thinking about you even if they are with somebody else they're thinking about you so either way yeah they're thinking about you <clears throat> All right, up next, I have the Lover's Path Tarot. So these cards, this is the present situation in your connection, what it is that your person of interest is feeling currently. Here with this deck, I go a little bit into the past to have a look at what happened in the first place that caused this problem. So things in this connection were sweet, they were good, they were increasing, they were um, accelerating, but all of a sudden, boom, something happened and then things just went downhill. Something sweet became very sour. So what was that? What were the reasons behind that? Here, your person of interest had some concerns, they had some issues, but they weren't really telling you what they were feeling. Here it is. This is something that happened in the past that they were not telling you. Interesting, you have here the Queen of Coins and the Queen of Staffs. That is very, very rare for me to see that. So this is for those of you that have not had closure and you wanted closure. This is for those of you that may have gone through tough times and this person took you for granted. They now started to fade away. They're breadcrumbing. They're texting you maybe just very, very scarcely, if that's a word to use. Um... It's like once a, once a week or once a month, but you know that there's something there that's not right anymore, and yet you are waiting. It's You feel that you're just anticipating and waiting for that next move, and in all honesty, those are mind games. So let's have a look. We have here the Queen of Coins and the Queen of Staffs. Let's look at the Queen of Coins first. Something that this person was thinking at the time, but they didn't really tell you. Here, there was a lack at some point in time in this connection. There was a lack of wanting to be a parent. So this person did not want to be in a connection where they had to take responsibility of someone else or something else. 
There was a lack at some point in time of warmth and affection and love and even loyalty. So there was a lack of that. What was needed was a need to ground oneself. Why? Because there was an over-materialistic orientation to life. And there was disappointments in the home. So over-materialistic orientation to life, this person may have been spending more money than they had. Or maybe they had money, but they would just spend it. Here we have over-materialistic orientation to life and the way they view life. It all comes down to how one feels about certain things. We have here disappointments in the home. So this does talk about how there is disappointments. There there could be more disappointments in the home, but whatever it was, it was piling up and it created a really bad impression at some point in time. And so this person's unable to move forward in this connection and any connection because they have had some sort of trauma or some sort of upsetness in their home environment. Now, the home environment doesn't necessarily mean just the home. It could be in their society. They've had a bad, a hard time with their friend circle. They had a hard time with their family, with their parents. They had a hard time. So it could be any of those. But the bottom line is that this person at some point in time was having disappointments in the home environment. <clears throat> Queen of Staffs. All right. The Queen of Staffs here talks about how there was a lack at some point in time. There was a lack of wit and wisdom. There was a lack of enthusiasm and action, and there was no feelings that someone was supporting someone. What happened here was that somebody was waiting too long to use their forces, and they were not showing their strengths. They were feeling powerless. So they had a lot to show, they had a lot to give, but they were not really showing their strengths and they were waiting too long for things to change because they were feeling powerless. <clears throat> if one is feeling powerless, it's because they feel somebody else is powerful. Somebody else holds the reins. Somebody else is calling the shots. This is the problem that this person had, that they felt that they had no freedom. They felt that they had no say in the matter. And so they did not contribute in any way. I see here with the disappointments in the home, it really has brought their, I'm seeing the word ego, but it's not really ego either, their ego pride, um, their stubbornness that they used to have has all come down now in the sense that because of the environment that they were in, they had to act like that. But now since things are not working with you either, all of that is just deflated like a balloon. It's just gone. But why they were doing the things that they were doing is because of the home environment and the feelings that they had at the time. The circumstances that they were stuck in at the time made them do this, made them behave in this manner. All right, so the next set of cards I have here, it's the Beginner's Tarot deck. So here I'd like to have a look at any actions, any plans, any intentions that your person of interest may have towards you in the coming future. We have here the Chariot followed by the Fool card. Then we have the Page of Cups. After that, we have the Five of Pentacles. The Chariot card here talks about a race towards the finish line, making a decision, wanting to make a decision and wanting to make the right decision. This is being pulled by desire. Your person of interest is feeling this. They're being pulled by desire. Remember, you do have feelings and emotions, right? Um, so there is a lot of desire here, but they're being pulled towards it. And what they're doing here is they're instinctively thinking. This is just their instincts. Here we also have the Fool card. They are taking a leap of faith. They are not really thinking about this. So this is an individual who takes action first and thinks later. The problem with that is that they're not really thinking straight anyway. They're just thinking with their emotions and they're thinking on a physical level. <clears throat> but they're not thinking about the future. 
And that's one of the issues with this card. It's somebody who's very compulsive, impulsive, and aggressive. It's somebody who's very immature. And that doesn't help our case because the next card right there, you have the Page of Cups. A page. Not even a knight, not a queen, not a king. So this is somebody who is very shy, very sheepish. They're going to be reaching out to you in a very calm way in a sense that, yes, they will be reaching out, but they're not going to be very loud. They're not going to be very direct. They may be very shy, very timid. Remember that they are reaching out to you. It's just that their method of reaching out may be a little, I'm getting the word unconventional. Now, we also have here the five of pentacles. Your person of interest feels that they do not have any love to give. They feel actually that they don't have any love to give. They don't have anything that they can share or do going forward. They feel lost. They feel deprived. They feel sterile. They also feel that they don't have money that they can give to you. Maybe because they've been spending too much. But they feel that they do not have money and they don't have that materialistic sort of lifestyle that you may like. Maybe you don't like that, but they want to provide this to you because they think whatever they like, maybe you like that too. From their point of view, they don't feel good enough. They feel unworthy. They feel neglected and rejected. And that's also the reason why they're coming to you, but in a very sheepish, very shy kind of manner. We also have here the high priestess. The high priestess here does talk about how in this connection, there is this desire to move forward and there's someone here that knows all of the secrets, all of the deepest emotions that are coming through, but no one's really expressing it. So there's a hope for the future. There's a hope that fate and destiny will work things out. But taking that time oneself, it's not happening. A person is not really reaching out. They're not really doing what it takes to do things on their own. <clears throat> So you do have action being taken. There's a lot of action cards here, Aquarius, but understand, even if they reach out, they may be immature or even inexperienced. And it is up to you to be the person, like the chariot, who can lead the way. But you do not rush into it like the chariot is rushing. You take it one step at a time. All right, let's have a look at what the angels have to say about this. Just going to do a quick prayer. <clears throat> All right. reconsider first card the strongest then we have here opportunity not bad be assertive and ask your angels We also have here, yes, with an exclamation mark. Then we have trust, followed by there's something better under the bottom of the deck, the overall arching theme. So we have here, reconsider. And with this comes the feeling that it's important to reconsider all that has happened, all that is happening. There's this lack of understanding that exists. And by reconsidering all that is happening, this talks about looking at the pros and cons, but also understanding that there's going to be a time when certain information is going to be revealed. And here I see this happening with Ask Your Angels. So 
the way I've mentioned this before, and this is my method, I'm not forcing this onto anyone, but this is the way I do it. So the way I do this is by praying to the Christ consciousness, and that is who we call Jesus. From there, in my mind's eye, I get to the point where uh, within a split second, you're in the holy light of God, and that is the Almighty. That would be his Father, the holy white source, the white, holy, white light of God. Always remember to say, not just holy light, um, sorry, not just light, but holy light. Always keep that word in there, because there are many lights in the universe. From there, and this literally just takes like a few seconds, by the way, I'm just explaining it a bit longer. You get into this state in your mind where you're seeing and you're enveloped by this holy white light of God, and then you call upon archangels Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, and Uriel to guide you and to protect you throughout this entire situation. Now you do ask for permission from the source, who is who we call God, because these angels work for that particular being, who we call God. And when we say that within a split second, we are in the energy of the angels. So you can ask, and you will be receiving signs and synchronicities, certain messages coming through. Now, this is where it comes and ties in with this one. When you get that, when you ask your angels, the answers will come to you, and eventually you will be able to reconsider what it is that you are going to say and do in this connection. Any source, any source, any sort of, okay, any source of information that you are going to receive will allow you to sort out what it is that you are going to say and do, and you'll be able to make a proper decision based on that. We have here, eventually, when you reconsider this, you are going to be receiving some sort of opportunity. At some point in time, opportunities will be coming to you. Now, this opportunity could be of literally abundance, or it could also be just another individual altogether. Either way, they are telling you here, it's very important for you to be assertive. Let this person know what you're comfortable with and what you're not comfortable with. Let them know what your healthy boundaries are. Create some healthy boundaries. That way, what happens is your person of interest will ha actually have um, more respect for you. And they will also fear doing something that will upset you because now you set the bar a bit higher. Okay, before it was low. Why? Not because you're low in any way, but because you love this person and you want to accommodate them. You want to help them. But unfortunately, in relationships, sometimes you have to set the bar a bit high so that that person that's down here, they can also come and elevate up high like that. This is something that I've seen with the many, many readings that I've done and the results of those type of actions. So it is important to behave in that way and it should come naturally. Now, we also have here perfect timing, then we have yes, then we have trust in the divine. So this all will happen, that opportunity, you connecting with the angels and you getting and receiving answers, you reconsidering, this is all going to happen in divine timing. <clears throat> and yes, it will happen in divine timing. Yes, there will be an opportunity. And yes, you will be able to be that assertive person going forward. Now, we also have here trust. Again, this is the holy white light of God. This is who we call the source of the universe, the Almighty. Do trust that there is some goodness out there, that things are written in our fates and destinies. There are little books that are written. Though That's our book of life. And so we have multiple realities that we can jump into. If you don't like this choice, you can jump from this choice, hop onto another one, just like a squirrel hopping on from one branch to the other. The fate and destiny, the foundation of that tree is still the same, but the branches are different variations of a theme. So if you don't choose this person, if you decide, you know what, I want to move on because I'm reconsidering and I want another opportunity, then there's no harm. You jump from one branch to the other. Your fate and destiny is already written. You're just the actor and actress playing that part. Now we also have here, there's something better. There's something better here when it comes to this person. There's something better when it comes to the situation. Usually I've seen this card has two meanings. One of them, there's something better that's going to come in this connection in terms of the situation itself. So the situation is going to become better. The second one I've seen is there's someone else coming into this connection who is going to make a big difference. So there are opportunities coming here. I see 
either the situation is going to change and it's going to work out, it's going to be perfect timing when it does. And if it's not the situation, it's the person. The person is going to change into, not into somebody else, no. Um, that could happen, that this person just turns a leaf and they're like, okay, you know what? I'm a brand new person. I'm not doing what I did before. I'm someone new. That could also happen. But mainly I'm seeing somebody else here too. So your situation can improve or there could be someone completely different coming into your life. That's that opportunity. And remember, when opportunity knocks on your door, don't just dismiss it. Think about it. Observe it. Even go out. Check it out. You don't know until you try, right? So don't reject everything that comes to you just like that. There's a reason why it's coming to you. All right. Aquarius, that is your reading. I hope I was able to provide you with some clarity and some guidance in your situations. Do let me know in the comments below if any of this has resonated. Also, for those of you that want some packages, um, that want some readings from me, I do have some readings available on my website, www.asnoichia.com, and go to the rates and packages section, I believe, and that's where you'll be able to see um, certain things that I have available right now. <clears throat> For those of you that want to learn more about spiritual connections and even about negative energies what and who they are, how to get rid of them, and also advice on relationships, I actually do have another channel for those of you who are new, and it is called Asnoinchia Audio. It is on YouTube. I recommend that you go through um, the majority, if not all, of those videos. They are very much in tune with what people have said in these specific readings, the ones that I have conducted, all of my clients, all of the viewers, the people that leave the comments, all of that information at some point in time, I consolidate it and I notice that, oh, wow, okay, there's a trend, there's a pattern, this is the issue. So then I create those type of videos based on the issues that all all of you um, are going through. And even myself, for example, there's some situations that are the same. Love is a universal language. And when it comes to relationships, doesn't matter where you are on planet Earth. Everybody's going through the same thing. It's weird. It's a really weird thing, but it's very common. So please do have a look and um, please do like, share and subscribe on that channel too. I have that um, channel. It's on YouTube. It is a Snoichi Audio and I also have all of the videos for free viewing. They are not charged. So you can see the videos for free and it's just for insight. It's to educate and to inspire. All right, guys, you all take care, stay safe, and I will see you guys again. Bye now.